Hello, and welcome back to the party, everyone. Lately, I've been getting the question a lot, saying, Matthew, what is the best beginner snake? What is... I'm looking at myself on the screen, okay. Do you know what the best beginner snake is, Matthew? What's the best beginner snake? I want to know. Is it a corn snake? Maybe a ball python? And, uh... <laughs> okay, maybe I won't be English. Okay, but I've always wished I had an English accent because it's more exciting. It's like, hello everyone, today I'm going to show you this snake. This is like, hi everyone, look at this, there's a snake in here, I'm going to show it to you. Um, so the big problem with thinking of things as, what's a good beginner snake? You shouldn't think of it like that. You should think, what is the right snake for me? Any snake can be a beginner snake, depending on the circumstances, depending on the individual. Let's talk about the two most popular ball pythons, okay? And just like I mentioned with individuality, I'm gonna pull out one of the ball pythons that I kept from last year. Her name is Mika. This is Mika. And now if you look at Mika, Mika is so cute. And she's very like timid and shy and she doesn't really do much. She's not very confident. She's very cute, a beautiful snake, and yes, she would make a lovely first pet. Not for you, because she's mine. Now let's take a look at Shiro. Shiro is another beautiful ball python. And she would make an even better pet. You know why? Because she's not scared. She's been handled quite a bit, and she's confident. So she's not curling up into a ball and doing nothing. Which ball pythons are known to do. She would make a wonderful pet. Once again, not for you because she's mine. This here is Theseus. He's my first pet snake. And he's still around. He's about eight years old, nine years old, maybe 10 years old. I'm bad at keeping track of things. And he's still great, but you see, the problem with getting a snake like this, for instance, like for me, is that, okay, I got him, and the first year I had him, I had so much fun with him, I didn't have any other snakes, he was my best buddy, and we hung out all the time, and it was wonderful. But now, he, he honestly, he, he barely gets handled. So, and I can't, I can't sell him because I don't feel right selling him, but let's say I had a cousin or a nephew or niece or something that really wanted him and would have him as a great pet, I would just give him away to someone knowing that he's going to have a wonderful life. And, and that's honestly what I'd like to do with him. The problem with thinking of a snake as a beginner snake, any, any snake as a beginner snake, is that they're going to live 30 to 40 years if you take good care of them. So if you're going to take good care of your beginner snake for 30, 40 years, that's not, not really a beginner snake. It's, it's a half a lifetime commitment. You're going to have that snake for half your life. So you should really think about that before just going and getting something because it's easy. Because it's not about how easy it is. It's about, you know, taking care of it. The question is like, what, what do you want? Do you want a green tree python? Because they get villainized a lot. And people think, oh, a green tree python, that can't be a beginner snake. But I can reach in and take my green tree python and hold it. And we're going to have a nice time. And you see, I'm not being super gentle, but we're fine. So this snake, if that's your dream snake, and you put the time in it and get it from the time it's a baby and you get a captive bred one, this could be a wonderful beginner snake. The only thing that makes it more difficult than the other snakes is they won't tolerate bad humidity and they won't be good if you don't spray them often. So th that's, that's all they require, a little bit more spraying, a little bit more humidity, and there you go. The green tree python could be a great beginner snake for you. So you shouldn't trap yourself inside this thing where you think that there's only some snakes that are easy because it's not like that all snakes can be easy the question is do you have the time to put into them and do you have the space so do you want a snake that ends up getting bigger or do you want a snake that ends up being smaller that's that's your big question it's not is it a beginner snake it is it, am i going to be able to give it a nice big home 
because if you buy a bow off me, I'd like you to give them a bigger home than the ones that I keep them in, because it's just like, I have it in a big tub. Is that the best life for it? I'm not saying it is. I don't think it is. I'd like you to take it and stick it in the biggest home that you can give it. And if you're ready to do that, then there's no reason that a boa can't be a wonderful beginner snake. Here we have a freshly born boa. And you see, from the time it's born, it's curious, it's inquisitive, it's not like curling up and terrified. And the way that it behaves now, it's not like it grows up and turns into a monster. And I think some people get this idea that like the snakes, as they get bigger, they're gonna get scary or something. Now, if you neglect them, think about a dog that gets neglected. I, I know many dogs that their owners don't really give them that time and they don't put an effort into them anymore and then that dog chases people around barking and biting your ankles. So, <laughs> same thing with these snakes. If, if you put in that time, this snake is gonna grow up and it's not gonna turn into a monster or a nasty animal. It's gonna stay the same. What are you waiting for? Do it! Just do it! Yes, you can! Just do it! Same snake, this is a boa, just grown up, another moon glow, and this snake is now three or four, and you see the same way, there's, there's, there's no real difference except that it gets a little bit bigger. So there's no reason that a boa is any worse of a pet snake than a ball python or a corn snake or anything else, and the same thing kind of with any type of snake. But the question is, are you ready to house a boa? Because it's gonna keep getting bigger. Let's get a bigger one. I love showing Annie, because Annie, like, Annie's gonna come out. Well, who knows, maybe, um, maybe she's gonna come out too. So we got two girl boas in here. I don't know if you can see them. Come on. And, uh... <laughs> Let's see if I can show you. They're so cute. They're like coming to me. They're like, hey daddy. Come on. Annie always comes to say hello. This is Annie. Okay, I'm gonna take her out. <laughs> Annie is one of my favorite boas, and she's she's a motley annery, so nothing super exciting, but I rescued her, and when I first got her, she was mite infested and just really unhappy. So if you don't care about getting a fancy snake or a fancy like morph or anything and you just want a great pet, I would suggest not even buying a snake from me or a pet store. Look for them on Kijiji, look for them on Craigslist, and if you can find one that you can rescue, rescues make often better pets than even ones that I raise from the time that they're born. Because there's, there's something that goes on with animals, I believe, when they're mistreated and in bad condition, and then you take them and you put them in good condition because it's just like she was suffering, she was living a crappy life, and then I took her and I spent hours like fixing her, treating her for mites, cleaning her, making sure she had a fresh home, food, water, just taking care of what she needed. After that, it's like she changed. She kind of became more, more curious, more uh, friendly. And it, it's a hard thing to kind of explain but I've thought about it actually with this new uh, green tree python. But first, I don't know, for me, I love boas. I'm the boa guy, but when it comes to like, 
the thing with boas is I can go and reach and grab any one of my boas and I never have to worry about being bit. Now with this green tree python, I'm going to see if I can take him out because it's hit and miss. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. Sometimes he'll just strike at me and sometimes it's okay. Okay, so we got him. We got him out. To me, this animal is not a good beginner. The other one would have been great because she's nice. This one's kind of like scared and nippy and stuff. Although he's never bit me because I've just kind of held him with confidence. And I can read. Over time you get to read your animals. You can kind of tell what mood they're in and what you can and cannot do. Uh, the thing with this animal is because he's so aware, because he's so ready to kind of strike at any time, because he's like watching everything, uh, he has more awareness than my other green tree pythons. My other green tree pythons are not afraid, so they don't really care if I hold them or grab them or do anything with him. He's always on the ball. He's always kind of worried, like, what's going to happen to me? So because of having that kind of extra caution where he's kind of like <gasps> tense and what's going on, later on, once he builds that trust, he'll still have that kind of awareness. So it's almost like he has more awareness than the other ones. So eventually he might be kind of like Annie where he notices me and might come out to me or something. Like it's a possibility. And I think that that's the reason why snakes that are kind of been kept in bad conditions or haven't been treated well when you do treat them well they notice it and they appreciate it so you end up having like a better relationship with them and it's it's it really is one of the most rewarding things to kind of take an animal that's difficult and turn it into an animal that's nice if it's going to be your first snake experience you don't want to start off with an animal that's attacking you because that's not going to make it better for you so now let's take a look at a um Let's take a look at a corn snake. This is Kyra, and uh, she is actually another rescue. She has some, uh, she had some damage, and basically, like, she had some sort of trauma here, and then th from there on, her spine is all kinked. But she is a wonderful sweetheart. And personally, for me, corn snakes are great, but I don't like how they look as much. Like, I, just personal preference, I don't find them that pretty but to each their own right when it comes to like corn snakes i would much rather have a rat snake i just find rat snakes are a lot prettier than corn snakes they just have like kind of beefier faces they're a little bit bigger and uh this is a white-sided rat snake and i just find they i don't know i just i find like they're just a little bit smarter they're a little bit bigger they're a little bit, uh, they're also a little bit feistier. So a corn snake right off the bat as a baby is going to be easier to kind of deal with than a rat snake. Lots of the time rat snakes come out biting and they're just kind of a lot more nippy when they're babies. But if you can get them past that, then once again, I find that when you have all that activity, all that nippiness, all that awareness, later on when it's calmed down, it becomes something else. Whereas the animals that are kind of calm and they're not as aware, they're just calm or they're just scared and you're not going to get as much interaction out of them later. Whereas you take a rat snake that's going to be kind of more on the ball, more ready to go at you, ready to like come and get you. When you do calm them down, they're, they're, they're more aware of you. They're more, more nice and everything. When it comes to corn snakes, I would recommend a rat snake. I just, I love rat snakes. Out of all the coolabrids, rat snakes are one of my favorites. She just musked. <laughs> like, I didn't raise her. I got her, I noticed her on Kijiji a pile of times, so I knew what was happening as she was being bought and then sold and bought and sold because when a snake is difficult, often people get it, oh it's beautiful, and then it starts biting them or being mean, and then it goes up for sale. So she just kept being sold on Kijiji and I always noticed her, I'm like, oh she's beautiful. So I ended up getting her and she is a difficult snake, she's not really, a, she's not a good pet snake. So when you go and you buy a snake, you have to interact and handle them. You could handle a tiny snake that's really nasty. You could get a big snake that's super gentle. One of the most underrated snakes, I think, is the uh, African house snake. If you want to get a snake that's going to be small and just very easy to manage, super cute, look at these African house snakes. If it'll clear up. This is Delilah. 
these snakes are just beautiful. They're cute. Uh, if you wanted to set up a bioactive enclosure for a snake, this would be the perfect kind of candidate because they're just, they're so little, they're so kind of easy to give them a good home. And because of that, what would be a small home for a larger snake would end up being a large home for a small snake. So nice thing with a snake that's kind of small, even like a ball python, they stay pretty reasonable. So you could give them a nice big home and give them a beautiful environment and make it not only fun for them, but make it fun for you. Because when you have a nice big home for them to explore and do stuff, you can kind of set that up in your house, kind of like a display, almost like art, where it's just people come in and they see your snake and it's doing stuff. That's a lot more exciting than having them in a drawer. It's better for them, it's better for you, it's better for everyone. Let's pull out a big one. Okay, now for the next one, notice I'm gonna use, this is like my snake hook, I'm gonna take it. And the snake hook I don't grab them with, I just kinda use it to let them know they're not being fed. And the only snakes that I have to use this with are my Super Dwarf Articulated Python. Any other snake that I have, I know I can just go in and grab and not have to worry. So now check out this snake. This is a 75% Kalatoa is it a Kalatoa? I don't know what it is. Okay, it's a 75% Super Dwarf Reticulated Python. And this, to me, is not a beginner snake. Uh, even the Super Dwarfs, I don't believe that they're beginner snakes. I think that they're wonderful snakes. They're probably my favorite snake to work with. But this is the one snake that I would not really recommend to beginners. And the reason is, like I told you, learning to read the snake, it takes time. And if you don't know how to read these snakes, accidents can happen, mistakes can happen. Even if you do know how to read them, even if they've always been nice, you, you have to be careful because they are a little bit more sporadic sometimes. So every time I take out my super dwarfs, and even with, I have six super dwarfs, and two of them, I wouldn't need a snake hook. I wouldn't really need to warn them, but I do it anyways just to be safe because you never know. But a snake like this, this isn't even fully grown, and most of what we see with super dwarfs are young ones. We're not seeing a lot of adults. And there is basically one locality, and that's Karampas, and you can see them on uh, Reach Out Reptiles, and that's the only locality that really stays like super small. These guys can get pretty big. They can be a lot of snake to handle. And uh, if, if you don't put in enough time, you, it, it could be easy to have a negative experience. Are they amazing pets? Yes, they are. But another thing is people seem to get reptiles and then they get more and more and more. And this kind of snake, unless you're breeding, I really believe is the a, a good snake to have as a pet if it's just going to be your only pet snake because they need more space. They are very active and they're amazing, but they're just they're not an animal that's super easy. They uh, if if for whatever reason they're unhappy with their conditions, they'll start trying to get out and they'll shove their face everywhere. If it's a male and it wants to breed, it could shove its face everywhere. It's just, you have a lot more issues with pushing, and you have a lot more, like, it doesn't like to calm down as much. It's always, like, hyper and on the move. Wonderful animal. They probably are my favorite, but I don't believe that they're a good beginner snake. I'd also much rather get bit by a large boa than by a retic. I've been bit by both, and when I get bit by boas, which is rarely ever, but it's usually nothing. This is a black tail Kribo, and uh, they're called, they're part of a family called Drymarkon. They're really fun snakes, very active, and uh, <laughs> another really hyper animal. And I find very cool, it's almost like having a giant corn snake. They're very difficult to find, there's not a lot of uh, people that have them here, especially in Canada, but beautiful snake. I'd say it could make a great beginner snake too. You just have to be careful with their conditions. With with any animal, really, really, and almost any animal, almost any 
snake can be a great beginner snake. This is Xena. She looks similar to the uh, rat snake I showed you. Okay, so this is a Florida, a Florida king snake, and uh, there's California king snakes, and I find that they're a lot more nippy and uh, harder to tame. But the uh, Florida king snake is a wonderful snake. They eat amazing, and they're super. She knows the difference between food and my hands which I always find interesting because she's ready to go and attack anything. But when I come to pick her up, she never strikes at me. And whenever I bring her food, she goes at it right away. That's Xena. And she's a white-sided, exanthic Florida king snake. So I think that these type of king snakes make wonderful first pets also. They're almost like a mini, like having a mini dry mark on, because they'll eat just about anything. So if you're looking for a new pet snake or your first pet snake, really don't get caught up with what's a good beginner snake. Don't, don't think that way. Think, what is a good snake for me? What's my favorite snake? What am I drawn to? And what are its requirements? And can I do that for them? I don't know if you've ever seen sugar gliders, but they're super cute and I've always wanted one. But I look at their care requirements and I couldn't provide that for them. And because of that, I never got sugar gliders, even though I wanted them. Going into this, getting your first pet snake, ask yourself, do I really want an animal for the next 30, 40 years? Am I going to be able to give this animal a good life for the next 30, 40 years? Which animal do I want? And then you have to figure out, where am I going to get it? Who am I going to get this animal from? Once you figure out the animal that you want, that's the first thing you should figure. And it doesn't matter, like I said, if it's a green tree python, if it's a boa, if it's a small snake, if it's a large snake, none of that really matters. What matters is, are you going to be able to provide for it for the next 30 to 40 years? Where are you going to get it? Figure out what you want, figure out where you're going to get it, and then when you go to buy it, even though you're excited to buy it, spend some time with it. Handle it. If you can't handle it from the beginning, then it's not a good snake for you. If you can handle it, and it's calm, and you feel it, and its body isn't tense on you, it's relaxed, it's kind of exploring a bit, look for those things. Don't just buy it because you want it. I've made that mistake before where I really wanted a tortoise, I wanted an elongated tortoise and I just went and I bought it in a parking lot and I didn't know really anything about tortoises. I knew what it needed but I didn't really know to look at how it walks and everything. I brought it home and it didn't walk properly and to this day it's still slowly getting better but it might never walk the way a tortoise should. When you go to get your first animal, make sure that you spend time holding it. Feel its body. Is it tense? Is it relaxed? And look at it. Look at its uh, butt and see if the butt looks good, if it's clean, um, if there's anything there. Look at its eyes. Are its eyes clear? Look at its skin and check kind of the skin under their head and check. look for mites. Look for uh, stuck shed. Look for different things. Investigate the animal very well before you buy it. Check for its personality. Check its overall appearance and make sure that it's the one that you really want because whatever animal you buy, whatever snake you buy, it's going to be there for half your lifetime. So that's what you really need to consider. If you want to learn more about taming snakes, working with reptiles and their personalities and stuff, I have a couple videos at the end. So just click on those and check those out. I hope I was able to help you and if you found this useful, smash that like button. Be sure to subscribe and uh, Join us for the party because we're always having fun here.